Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, Leanne Kreischer, the wife of Burt Kreischer, the famous stand-up comedian who has a awesome, awesome podcast on YouTube called Wife of the Party. I'm having her back on the show today. It's been over a year since we last talked. A lot's happened, of course. We've got quarantine. Things have come up in our lives. And I'm having her back on the show today. We're going to reflect on all of that. Um, her show has been virtual, of course, um, ever since quarantine. I want to talk to her about that. I haven't been watching it that much. I'm not a big virtual podcast kind of a guy. I just get so distracted when I see two people talking via computer screen and they look like robots and sound like it and there's a lot of delayed responses. It's just as bad, if not worse, for when um, news reporters are talking to people virtually, you know. But um, again, I love Leanne. She's awesome. And I'm going to have her back to talk about all of the stuff that's gone on in the last year. So, uh, yeah, here is my new interview with Leanne Kreischer. Hey, Leanne. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back. How are you? I'm okay. How are you doing? Uh, hanging in there, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's been going on in COVID for you? Oh, God. Well, between the months of January and March, I was on a diet. I lost 25 pounds. I need to keep going, though. And because um, I had my uh, physical at the end of last year, my blood sugar was getting high. And once COVID happened, I just went back to eating crap again, and I need to uh, go back to being healthy again, especially during this time. My mom had a bad accident um, the weekend of the 18th. Oh, no. What happened? I woke up at 4 in the morning, and she was laying on the floor bleeding. She, oh, no. She's been, okay, so she's been taking CBD oil and pills and drinking alcohol and stuff she shouldn't be doing. And she's been, it's been making her depressed, all those things, especially the CBD oil is the worst. If you take it every day, you just start getting self-loathing and all that really? stuff. Really? Oh, yeah. If you take That's way, kind of scary. You take way too much, yeah. And she was just feeling depressed and everything, and she was acting really weird for a couple of weeks. And just uh, that, that the Friday before, she was just feeling helpless and just like done with life. And we tried to stop her and stuff. And she just told us, fuck you. And just all this stuff that she doesn't normally say to us. No, this and, is terrible, Tommy. Do you think it was about, wait, when was this? The 18th of what? Of July. Okay. Do you think it has anything to do with being quarantined or? I think it's a combination of quarantine and just for the fact that she just won't get over her ex, her ex who put us on the streets and hit her and stuff. I just don't know why she can't let go of that, you know? Hmm. Well, wow. That is a good question. Why can't she let go of that? Does she feel like, what was she getting from it that was, that she's missing now? Financial security, um, Probably uh, good sex, a lot of different things. <laughs> Could be a lot of different things. <laughs> As you know, we all we all mourn the things that were good. We forget about the things that were bad. Yes. So she's probably hanging on to that, right? Yeah. To those good times, we get we get rose colored glasses after a breakup. If especially if you're the one that was dumped. You only remember the good stuff and forget, oh, yeah, wait a minute, we fought every single day. Oh, yeah, you didn't hit me. Oh, yeah, there's that. We just kind of forget that, don't we? We just focus on what yeah. we've lost 
as opposed to maybe it was a blessing. Yeah, um, it's sad. Walking forward. That's really hard, Tommy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, she's in a, a somewhat vegetative state. Oh, my God. So yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What accident did she have? You found her bleeding, but what was wrong? Okay, I, I found this out after the fact because she, it didn't seem that bad until I, I laid her down. I got her up and I laid her down in the, in her bed. Okay, so apparently she just you know lost balance and she fell back and she broke her neck and she <gasps> cracked her skull. Oh my god! And her arm was already broken. She had arm surgery twice in the last year because uh, she took a fall at work. I think I told you that the last time we talked. Yeah. You did. Yes. And she broke the other one. And I just did not, uh, I did not notice anything until I laid her in the bed and her forehead was all caved in and it was just devastating. Oh my oh, God. That's terrible, sweetie. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I just. So she's in the hospital? She's in a uh, facility, uh, a rehab facility that my um, stepmother uh, put her in and my stepmother so mad at her for because she because they were they've been hanging out a lot in the last few weeks and my mom was lying to her and saying that she wasn't drinking and stuff and then as soon as she left she went and bought bottles at the liquor store mm. oh my goodness alcoholism is such a terrible disease it's so hard to understand i think for people who don't struggle with it um yeah that's terrible honey so what do they think what is her prognosis? I mean, will she recover? Is this well? Is okay. this her life, or? It, it, she definitely won't be able to drive again for sure. Um, right. But well, um, will she wake up? Because she's in a vegetative state. You said. Well, also, it's not a coma. She's awake, but she's just she's just now starting to remember stuff and talk normal again. I see. She's recovering. Yeah. And, but uh, she's got a long way to go, and this is a very tough uh, facility, and she has to have the will to, to, um, to, to get better. And I think she will because my whole family is just lucky and full of perseverance. And we, we've had things happen to us that people don't believe, but we end up getting out of it okay. So. Well, we'll hope for that here as well. Right? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so sorry. That's very hard. Yes. Especially in this moment in time in society in general where you can't move around freely or, you know, go take a walk as easily as you could before. The saddest. Makes it even more difficult. The, the saddest part about the whole thing is that I can't go see my mother because of COVID. They have yeah. policies. But. The fact that she was there for me every weekend when I was in the hospital, it just, it makes it all the more sadder that I can't go see her. Yeah, that's, that's awful. So what are you doing to take care of yourself? <laughs> to take care of myself, like I was like going back to the weight loss thing, you know, I haven't been able to go to the gym here in the apartment because it's been closed. They just opened the pool back up again, but there has to be a certain amount of people there at a certain time, otherwise... Uh, they're going to get COVID, as they, they think. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm constantly doing my podcast. Um, this has been just the best year for it. I've, I've, I've gotten icons on the show. It's been amazing. amazing. Yeah. And it's just, that's, that's all I've been doing, you know, but I need to figure out a way to just, you know, go back to eating healthy again because... <sighs> I, I'm supposed to go back to the doctor in October. I'm probably going to delay all my doctor appointments now because of all of this. Because yeah. it's just, I just don't feel like going and getting uh, critiqued uh, for my health right now. <laughs> Not something you're looking forward to, huh? No. no. <laughs> I hear you. It's so hard when you are, especially when you are stuck at home, to stay on the path of eating healthy. It's really, really hard. I do not think you are alone in that struggle. I think that you are probably in lots of good company. <laughs> it's super hard yeah. to say, yep, I'm going to have chicken breast and a salad again. Because really, when you're stuck at home in quarantine, there's only so many things you can do to entertain yourselves. And one of the things you can do is, is enjoy what you're eating. So I understand why that would be such a struggle. Um, it's
it's a struggle when you're not in court. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a huge shift in habits and mindset and intention that it's it's really difficult. I think sometimes people uh, in the fitness world make it seem like, oh, it's super easy. Just follow this plan and you'll be good. But it's actually not that easy. It it takes a lot more effort than that, a lot more right. change, you know, to to really make that change is very, very hard. And, you know, it's not like stopping drinking. You don't have to drink alcohol to live, you, but you kind of have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, like, just go, okay, I'm just not eating anymore and then lose weight. You, ha- you still have to eat. So it makes the battle, I think, that much harder because the choices you have to make every single day, all day long, have to be right. And it's just really hard. Yeah. Um, really hard. Yeah, I mean, my brother, okay, so he... I was just about to ask about your brother. Yeah. <laughs> so, How's your brother? So, okay, so last September we had to ha- have him put in jail because he went crazy and he started hitting us and everything. So um, he got sentenced to um, a six-month lockdown and he did very well. He's been doing very well since he got out end of May. And, Good. Uh, yeah, he's got a new girlfriend, um, and um, he's he's working on getting a job and stuff. It's really hard right now because of COVID, but um, yeah, um, he's going to court next week to see if the charges will get dropped and everything. And um, he's trying to um, get his license back. It got suspended because of child support and stuff. Um, but other than that, he's doing great, and he's. I mean, he's just as sad as I am over this whole thing with our mom, but he's he's hanging in there, and he's doing really, really good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, because I know you sounded almost um, nervous, like um, really anxious where he was concerned. Um, mm-hmm. We were talking about him on one of our conversations. I thought, oh, to, his brother makes him so anxious. Um and he sounded like a very unpredictable, unstable guy. So it sounds like maybe maybe he's one of the people that being incarcerated could have helped. Maybe just kind of pump the brakes, buddy. Let's pump the brakes yeah, I, and get our head straight a little bit. Uh, I think that's probably what some of prison is supposed to do. I'm not sure how effective it is, but mm-hmm. I would imagine for some people who really want to change, it, it would be good to just have them stop everything and um, think about what they're doing and their consequences in a real way. It's hard to do that, I think, in day-to-day life. We take for granted that we still have to go to work, we still have to take care of kids, and we still have to, you know, go through the day-to-day. And sometimes it's really hard to get past something huge like alcoholism or being an abusive person. If you still have the pressures of everyday life, um, it makes it that much harder to kind of stop and reflect and make a different choice. Um, so maybe, maybe that's what it did for him. Do you think that's what it did for him? Something like that? I think it's a combination of that. And, um, I don't know if I told you this the last time it, it, it may have happened right, right after, but, uh, he ha- he had a moment, um, where he drank t- too much to the point where his heart stopped and they had oh, to, oh God. He had to be in the hospital uh, for a couple, uh, or not, not, not a day, just uh, like like half a day or something, and it didn't, it didn't like you know, it didn't make him see the light right away and stuff though. But it was one of the things that you know got him started before, you know, he had to get locked up and stuff. So he was on his way to a bottom. Mm-hmm. So they say you have to hit a bottom before you start making a change. And I think that's how you learn how to make change. And after you learn how to make change, you don't have to hit a bottom anymore. But sometimes you do have to hit a bottom. I definitely hit a bottom when I was younger and um, was like, what What am I doing with myself? What? Why am I behaving this way? And why am I making bad choices that ends up in bad consequences and scratching my head going, gee, why did this happen? Uh, I can't do that over and over again without, you know, you can, if you do the same 
thing over and over again and expect something different to happen, you're crazy. You, you have to make a change, and I think sometimes people have to really hit a bottom to wake up and know that it's no longer an option to behave the way they've been behaving. Um, I wish it didn't have to work that way, but I think it does for some reason. For most people, you have to just hit some kind of bottom. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to take care of yourself? I'm concerned about you taking care of yourself. Are you, are you, do you have any, well, you said the gym is closed at your apartment. Right. Um, are you going for any walks or do you have, um, any books you read or are you watching movies? I'm doing, do you love? what are you doing? I'm doing all of the above. Okay. So. Uh, with the, as far as walks, okay, I am walking, but I have to be careful because I, I was not aware of this until maybe about a year ago, and um, I, I wish I had known sooner. Um, okay, so over here in Reading, it is very, very hot in the summertime, yeah. like 110 degrees hot, and because I have a stint in my heart from my accident and stuff, you know, it's not very good to, like, be in hot weather walking around for a long period of time. And I was one, I was wondering why in the previous summers I was here, why I just, I, I felt so winded after um, I would take this long walk down the stretch of highway over here, which I stopped doing as, as, as soon as I found out um, this article last year I read. So I just walk outside here, you know, I go to check the mail, I go to the store, you know, that's as far as I do is walking as concerned. Right. Um, I did, so in January and February, I went to uh, physical therapy. My doctor recommended I go to physical therapy, that it, was, it would help me get started with the weight loss. And I was having some back trouble. And then when I came back for my follow-up appointment, we, we realized that I, I may have acid reflux disease. It runs in our family, you know, and we think that's what it might be. Um, because my, my back, it still, uh, feels, uh, funny and the physical therapy, it helped with the weight loss. It didn't help with my back, unfortunately. And ironically, my mother was going to them the last few weeks leading up to her accident and stuff. Uh, cause she had, um, you know, problem with her arm, uh, during the recovery process. Mm -hmm. But yes, I'm, I'm doing all of that. Um, uh, uh, this one guest of mine who's um, been on here at least four or five times, who's a, a good friend, she has a memoir out, and um, I ordered it, and I, I fucking hate PayPal. They are the worst. <laughs> Why? Be what happened with PayPal? You, 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 uh, you, you order from them, and you don't uh, get it for a long time. I ordered this book almost four weeks ago going on and I still haven't gotten it yet and I want to read it so I can have her back on and tell her what I thought of it and stuff and it's just taken forever but my uh, goodness what's the delay do you think but you know I have to tell you mm -hmm. I think COVID has messed up a bunch of stuff with with shipping we, we've had two packages lost for our business and you know packages never get lost but um the, the Postal Service said they are having a lot of trouble during COVID. So I wonder mm -hmm. wonder if that has anything to do with it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I did get an email saying that it's, it's being delayed and stuff. But in general, they are terrible. Um, I've only ordered from them a handful of times. And both times, it just took forever, you know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I can't do it. I, I, I can't do anything about it, though, because PayPal is part of the system of whatever I'm buying, you know. Yeah. Do you like to read? Um, I used to. I'm not as I, my attention span has gotten a lot shorter in terms of reading. Not in terms of watching movies, thank God. But like in terms of reading, yeah, not as much, you know. But not I'll, as much. But if I'm reading about someone that I that I, that I like or love um, in the entertainment world, it's easy for me to read that. Right. Really, you like reading things you're interested in learning about. Right. Hearing about. Yeah, I understand that. I kind of go through phases that way, too, where I sometimes I'll read just anything, and then sometimes I can only really read what I'm interested in. Just kind of changes as, I guess, depending on what's going on in life. But I know Bert's that way, too. He reads only something he's interested in. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. If he's not interested in it at all, he's not going to read it. <laughs> so, um, 
Well, I was going to say, I don't know, do you have a device like an iPad or something like that? No, I don't do the iPad thing. A Kindle, nothing like that? No. Mm. So, no, a lot of libraries have digital uh, audio books and digital books that you can check out for free, which oh. is really kind of cool. You just have to sign up, and the library is free. It's such a great resource for people who like to read, to um, download to a digital device. You can even download it to an app on your smartphone, a Kindle app or um, an iBook app, um, any kind of reader app. And then you can just go to the public library online and, and rent. I, I wonder if you can rent movies that way as well. I know you could check out movies mm -hmm. back in the day when they were not digital. Uh, I wonder if you could digitally check them out at the library as well for free. Oh, yeah, they still have um, DVDs there. Um, but I do listen to, like, uh, audio books and stuff. Um, um, uh, Paul Stanley from KISS and Phil Collins, they have audio books that are on YouTube that you can listen to. Oh, I bet those were great. Yeah. Have you listened to both of them? Yeah, I've listened to sections of them, and they're pretty entertaining because it's, it's both of them actually, you know, reading the books uh, that they wrote. And um, they're, the, the, the Paul Stanley ones, are, uh, the Paul Stanley one is hilarious. Just the, the, the funny things he says about Gene, you know. <laughs> That's great. I'll have to check that out. I was a huge Kiss fan when I was younger. Loved yeah, their band. And I've so, heard I've heard Bert tell the story in his podcast about that bad experience he had with Gene. <laughs> I know. I'm not surprised. I mean, I've heard that from everybody. I don't think I've ever heard a good experience about Gene Simmons from anybody. I think he's got a nice, healthy ego. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> nice, healthy, pulsating ego. <laughs> That's my impression of Gene Simmons is that he's pretty much a walking ego. But yeah. I don't know. I still like Kiss. They were a cool band. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know. We saw Paul Stanley and his family at the movie theater uh, just randomly at the concession stand, and I just flipped out. I was like, oh, my God, it's Paul Stanley. That's Paul Stanley. And we just kind of waved at him, and he waved back. He was really nice. Um, or seemed to be nice. We would never have approached him or, you know, try to talk to him because he was with his family. But just a little wave, say hi. Um, yeah. And he waved back. So that was cool. I'll have to check that out. I didn't know they did audio books or, or live readings of books on YouTube. That's really cool. I'll have to see who else has done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really great. And you, you hear so much, you know, and these books are over five or six hours long. You know, the whole video, you have to, like, you know, break it down in sections to listen, you know, if you don't want to hear the whole thing and stuff. Right. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. So what? Is there a movie you've been watching over and over again, or what are you watching now? Uh, I'm watching, I'm watching all the classics, you know, over and over again. Um, I bought um, a movie my my grandmother and I used to watch when I was a kid. That I'm tr I, I'm trying to get somebody who can speak English from this movie on my show. Uh, do you remember The Gods Must Be Crazy? Yes. Yeah, I just got back into that movie again. It was it was hard for a long time for me to watch that movie again after my grandmother passed because it was just one of those movies that resonated with us in our relationship. That's so funny. You know, my mother loved that movie. She thought that was the funniest movie, and I watched it with her also. Um, but, God, she just loved that movie. It's such a funny, quirky movie. Yeah, and... There's um, there's not a whole lot about about it written on the internet, but there's some stuff. Um, you know, the guy who made it, he had made a movie. Of, it was a, it was a semi documentary in the '70s called "Animals Are Beautiful People," and he thought while he was making that movie, wouldn't it be funny if you know um, civilized man was was in these surroundings and funny things happened that didn't look normal to the Bushmen? So that's where that movie came from. How interesting. I I actually have Animals Are Beautiful People on VHS. My grandmother, my mom's mom, gave me that for a Christmas gift one year, and I thought that was just funny, as funny as it could. That was my speed, Animals Are Beautiful People. Mm -hmm. I thought that was hysterical. I actually should dig that out and see if I can show it to uh, Isla. She is such an animal lover. She would probably get a real kick out of that movie. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there a part where... 
like baboons were doing cartwheels down a hill or something? I think so. It's, it, it's, it's been years since I've seen that. Oh, I loved that movie. I didn't know that it was the same person that made those two films. That's so crazy. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. The second... Yeah, isn't, I, I haven't seen The Gods Must Be Crazy in a long, long time. But isn't there a part where a guy is just walking through the savannah and finds, like, a glass Coke bottle or something? Well, well, yeah, that's the, that's the main part of the plot. The, the Bushman finds a Coke bottle after the pilot throws it out of a window, out, out of the airplane window that he's flying, and they think it's something that God brought down, and then once the kids start hitting each other in the heads with it, he's, <laughs> he, de- right, he, right. he declares it evil, and he wants to go to the end of the earth to throw it off, and that's his mission throughout the whole movie. <laughs> So funny. I, I forgot about the plot. Yes, I just remember the bottle and him picking up the bottle and being confused. And That's right. That's such a funny movie. I'll have to watch that again. That was back in the day when Coke, when all Coke bottles were glass. Now, the only glass ones you see are like in the uh, taquerias. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you have, they, they're special. They're really special now. And they, they usually come with extra sugar, <laughs> which I oh, don't yeah. mind. <laughs> sugar cane, yes. <laughs> I love that Coke with extra sugar. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've been off soda for a month now. I, I finally... Okay, so I quit during my, my diet uh, between January and March, and then um, I didn't do it all the, until until COVID hit again. And then, um, I, you know, I was just drinking the diet soda, which is just as bad as the sugar, but I'd rather drink that than the sugar, you know. But then I stopped, yeah. I stopped again a month ago, and I haven't looked back. Good for you. It's not good for you. The only time I really want soda mm-hmm. is when I'm really, really hot. So, like, if we if we are, uh, like, working in the yard all day, I know a lot of people like beer when they've been cutting the grass or something like that. I had rather just have a regular Coca-Cola. Uh, that is the best thing ever. That's the only time I really ever want soda is when I've done something outside that's really, really hot. Like, we, we just went to Lake Havasu, and it was 115 there. And at the end of the day, I was like, I just need to have a Coca-Cola. I just need a cold <laughs> Coca-Cola bottle would be my number one choice, but I'll take it in a can. Let's just, I, I need it to, I don't know. It's so refreshing in certain circumstances. It's kind of the only thing I want. I know some people do that with beer, but I've never been a big fan of beer. Yeah, I'm that way too with Monster Energy, which um, is is really bad. It's got twice the caffeine of any soda, and in the summertime, I I need uh, I need a Monster uh, once in a while. And my mom, leading up to her accident, she was she was giving me shit for that. She was just like, she was just like, that's bad. You shouldn't be drinking that. I'm, I, you know, especially with your with your heart trouble and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm just doing it in the summertime, mom. I don't drink it year round, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, none of that stuff's really good for you. We really all should be drinking is water. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so boring. <laughs> but that really is what we should all be drinking is just water. Just water, water, water. You know, water, um, I started working out with a trainer, which I'm still working out with on Zoom. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing that I did, I think, that helped me lose weight was drink a ridiculous amount of water. When he told me how much water I needed to drink a day, yeah. I was like, I don't even think that's possible. <laughs> um, and he told me I needed to drink 120 ounces a day, which is a gallon, I guess. Um, and I was like, I don't even, are you serious? And um, I have to tell you, I think he was right. It's actually fixed a lot of problems I had. I have really dry skin, Mm -hmm. like to the point where like my fingers will split under my fingernails and my heels will split open. And that's totally stopped, completely stopped since I started drinking that much water. And I've lost uh, 20 pounds. And I really do think a big part of it was the water. Um, is, you know, if you think about it, your body is 70% water. So, yeah. and then we end up drinking like two glasses a day, <laughs> if that. So, uh, I don't know. I think there's, I think he's, I think he's on to something with that. 
Yeah. Oh, I, I said the exact same thing when I went on my diet in 2006, you know, my life-changing diet. I was just like, I, it's not possible for me to drink eight glasses of water, you know, a day, but I did it, and I got into a habit of it, and then suddenly I didn't want to, I didn't want to drink anything else for a long time after that. Yeah, it's true. Once you get in the habit, it's not as bad as you think it will be. It's, it's actually pretty easy. I had to go. The way I was able to do it was I bought a 40-ounce water bottle, and I knew I needed three of those a day. So all I had to do was drink three of those a day, but if I don't have that water bottle, I can't keep track of it, and I keep not drinking enough water because I, I don't know how much I'm drinking. So it really helped me to have like a vessel that I went, okay, three of these a day. That's all you got to do. Um, so it seemed to work for me. I don't know. I had to make it so I didn't have to think about it all day and think, well, how many glasses have I had and what did I have with lunch? And I just needed to know I need three of these today. And then I could get it done. I don't know. Yeah. I. So, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah, I was going to tell you about that, that podcast interview I, ju I just did where I mentioned you. Oh, yeah? Who was it with? Uh, her name is Kat Lively. She had done my podcast the week before. She's a young 27-year-old, old Hollywood historian. I'm talking like old 30s, 40s, 50s Hollywood historian. I never thought I would ever meet someone younger than me who loves old Hollywood, and I reached out to her after she uh, had interviewed uh, a friend of mine, and uh, we just, oh my God, hit it off right away, and her and I talked for about 85 minutes on my show, and she's like, will you do my show at the end of this week and have it out, and it'll be out next week? I said, sure. So we talked just roughly an hour on her show, and I mentioned like all my favorite interviews and stuff, and I mentioned you, and I mentioned quite a number of people. And uh, we just had a great time. And I listened to it, and I'm like, oh, my God, I sound crazy. I'm just talk talking away. Even though I know I'm the guest, I just <laughs> – I was very insecure, but I was very proud of it. And it came out the day before my mom had her accident, so she didn't mm. get to listen to it, and she was going to, but she was too depressed, mm. sadly. Well, that sounds great. Um, I, um, I had to take a, a film history class one time when I was in school. And it was really, really awesome. I learned so much about early Hollywood, which is fascinating. I think it's important to know where we came from, you know, to um, to kind of see how amazing films are now, to realize where we started. We talk about that with our kids a lot. You know, we watch Star Wars for the first time with them. We were like, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> there was no CGI. They made everything into like a model in a miniature and then filmed it like real film. We watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind not long ago, and mm -hmm. I kept having to say, remember, this was mind-blowing. When this came out, people were like, mind-blown, because no one made this kind of special effects at that time. It was all kind of brand new right there in the you know, early, mid-70s. Everything started kind of changing where special effects are concerned with Lucas films and stuff, and we, I really try to let them know so that they can respect the film for what it was in its time period. Because if you, you know, if you put some of these films up against today's films, they're going to look ridiculous because everything's so advanced now, everything looks so real. Uh, I think it's really important to show them films from the past. Like, I've made my kids watch tons of black and white movies philadelphia story gone with the wind oh. um the wizard of oz um what else have we seen oh uh, tons of these older movies and then to sit with them and explain how life has changed not just for film but for humanity for for everything and film's a great way of kind of stepping back into the past you know yeah and do you have a sense of something larger than yourself and a sense of kind of where things have come from to now? Um, I think that's really cool. I'll have to check out your conversation with Cat Cat Lively, you said? Cat Lively, yes. And I, I tagged you on Facebook. 
Oh, thank you. I'm the worst. I am the worst <laughs> on social media. I have uh, Instagram is the only thing I ever look at, mm-hmm. and I should get better. And I say that every time. I should get better, but there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do all of it. Um, but thank you for talking about me. That's really cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's you're an awesome mom for showing your kids those movies because those are just classics. You know. I actually, the Philadelphia story, I, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I actually saw it in the theater um, um, in Palo Alto. We have the Stanford Theater over there where they showed the classics of uh, Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart, Hitchcock, all those classics. Oh, so stuff. great. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, we watch Philadelphia Story, and I every time we have a black and white movie, I made a list of movies that it was important for me for them to see. And Philadelphia Story is one of my most favorite movies also. I love that movie so much. Mm-hmm. And so I always sit down with them and go, okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to shift down a couple of speeds and know that this is going to move slower and know that it's going to be a lot of talking and know that this is not the way we are now, but this is important for you to see because this is the way society used to be. We even watched, um, we watched uh, the Pride and Prejudice, like six hour BBC miniseries. Yeah. So I wanted them to see that that's how the world worked at one point. You know, there's such a, uh, well, how do we know it's accurate? But to me, it seems like a pretty accurate depiction of what Jane Austen wrote in her novel. And to see that women just couldn't move about freely and there's so many restrictions about how people had to live. It's so important to just not watch Marvel movies all day, you know, or Twilight movies. Uh, I have lots of notes on Twilight, let me tell you. <laughs> we watched that recently in a marathon, and I was like, oh, my God, this is this is terrible. She's choosing the wrong guy for the wrong reasons. Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> have you watched the Twilight movies? I'm not a Twilight guy, no. <laughs> no, I'm not either. I do not recommend. I am not. Um, I We watched them because it was COVID. We were looking for something to quote marathon. You know, we, yeah. we love to movie marathon, like all the Pirates of the Caribbean in like consecutive order within two days. I mean, Isla's birthday party last year was Star Wars starting at episode one. And going all the way through every single episode, it took us a day and a half. Yeah. So we like started at 7 a.m. and ended at midnight, just watching movie after movie after movie after movie. And then everybody slept over, and then we started again the next morning. And I think we were done at 1 or 2 and watched mm-hmm. every single Star Wars um, year I have talked to a dozen people who played minor characters in the original Star Wars trilogy I didn't have yes I didn't have the confidence to do it before and stuff I had heard uh, rumors over the years that uh, you know everybody who's associated with Star Wars you know charges to like be interviewed or charges um, to just do anything and I I rolled the dice and I got lucky and um, I interviewed um, the black girl who was in Return of the Jedi. She's green in that movie. Uh-huh. Um, Femi Taylor. Oh, my God. So we uh, we, we were talking, and we, we, we got along great and stuff. You know, and she's English, and um, she lives all the way in Denmark. Wow. And um, I told her um, about um, my fetish for belly buttons, right? <laughs> And I and I asked her. I asked her. Uh, she had an in ear and Audi, right? And she told me that uh, she has nothing but a scar because when she was born, she had this Audi that was so friggin' huge that her parents ha- had to um, get it removed because uh, the doctor didn't cut the umbilical cord right away, right? So she sent me a picture of her 
when she was just a few weeks old with it, and my jaw dropped like, oh my god, it it looked like a a, a baby penis, like literally. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It was, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. Yeah. She was born. She was. She was born in the early '60s, so it was a different time. That's just crazy. I've never heard of that before. They 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 just cut it off and sewed it up, and now is she just flat with a little scar? Yeah, she doesn't even she doesn't even show anything off in that area now. <laughs> oh yeah, that's kind of odd. How crazy! So you have a belly button fetish? Oh yes, yes. I've been very open about it uh, for a long time and stuff, you know, but I've been probably more open about it now than I ever have been. And um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's normal. It's, it's definitely odd, but it's, I think it's, it's normal to have a fetish for something, you know? Yeah. To have something that that you like a lot. For Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. For sure. So, um, any suggestions for some movie marathons we could do with our family? Oh, my God. Let's see. I'm looking at my own collection. I have so many collections in my room. Let's see. Okay, you've done the Star Wars, the original. Okay, you've done, well, you've done both Star Wars, both st- generations of Star Wars movies. Yes. Um, have you showed them Star Trek? No. Have not shown them Star Trek. That's a good idea. I yeah. hadn't even thought of that. I was never a big Star Trek fan. I mean, I watched it when it was on TV, but not not like with any kind of real passion, but that's a really good idea. Yes. The, it's funny. The even-numbered ones are the best ones. The odd ones, <laughs> for some reason, are, are not. And I interviewed um, Nicholas Meyer, who directed 2 and 6. Oh, God, that was a bad interview. That guy is a prick, I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Very bitter. But he agreed with me when I said that the even numbers are the best ones, and he was biased because he directed two and six. But um, I I think that the, the, the even ones are, are the best. But, yeah, the, you, I, w- I would definitely show your kids the Star Trek movies. You know, are they, are they familiar with the entire series in general? No, no, that's why I think that might be really cool if we watch a few. I'm sure we can find the uh, TV episodes watch a few of those and then watch the movies. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. That's a great suggestion. Have you sh- another one? Give me another one. Cause you know, we got time on our hands here. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Have you, have you shown them, um, any great comedies like the police Academy movies? We have seen the police Academy movies. Um, we have, yeah, they've seen those. So funny. I don't think they get that sense of humor which is really interesting. There's some things that, like, because of who I'm married to, it was really important to me that they understood comedy um, when they were really young. So I, when they were really young and they were still watching DVDs in the car, Mm -hmm. I I bought all of I Love Lucy. And I just put I Love Lucy on, and they watched I Love Lucy constantly. And then I ran them through several seasons of Carol Burnett. And then I ran them through several seasons of The Muppet Show. Like, mm. this is comedy. Like, this is, this is really simple, clean, fun comedy. And then I started doing that with films. Mm-hmm. So we did a lot of Mel Brooks films. And we did a lot of, we did Police Academy. And we did, you know, What About Bob? And all these classic <laughs> comedies. So I think I've gotten them in the comedy genre pretty well. We have not touched horror because Isla Kreischer's heart might explode. I I put my big toe in the water. I think I talked to you about it before with Scream with her. Because I thought, okay, there's humor in Scream also. And it's not the most terrifying movie in the world, but it was too much for her. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) there's so many things I could show them in the world of horror. I mean, Freddy Krueger kept me up for years, but I don't want to do that. My Isla's imagination is just a little too vivid. Yeah. I think I think it would be very hard for her to process, you know, Jason and Freddy Krueger, and I don't think she could. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that would be a good idea. So I've done, I think I've done a lot in comedy. 
I could probably use suggestions in the classic film area because I've shown them what I've thought of, mm -hmm. but I know that there's so many things in classic films um, and in anything, you know, sci-fi related too. Yeah. Um, I would show them, uh, even though the, their attention span may be really short for this, I would show them Charlie Chaplin movies. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Really yeah. good idea. I'm a big Charlie Chaplin guy. I, I have been since I was at least seven. When I was seven and TNT was, was, was a fresh new channel, I saw a 24-hour Charlie Chaplin marathon and just loved everything I saw. That's really cool. That's cool. Okay, Charlie Chaplin, Star Trek. What else? Um, let's see. Have you shown them any of the classic musicals? Some of them. Uh, let's see. We've seen Carousel. They've seen Sound of Music, um, Grease. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, West Side Story. No, we haven't seen West Side Story. Watch I keep the suggesting that. We did this summer during, well, in the spring during COVID. I said, why don't we? print out a list of all Best Picture winners from the beginning to now, and just start watching movies that won Best Picture, and West Side Story was one of them, and mm -hmm. I keep suggesting it, and they're like, no, plus <laughs> something else. I, um, would, I would do West Side Story, I would do The Music Man. Um, we've watched The Music Man. Okay. Um, God, there's so many... So many of those good ones. Um, We've done Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain. Um, what else have we seen? Fiddler on the Roof. Um, hmm. I don't know. How about How about Godspell? No, haven't done that one. That's a good, good one. one. Yeah, Jesus Christ Superstar. Nope, haven't done that one. How about the... Oh, you probably haven't done this one either. The Apple? No. Yeah, uh, what's her name that I just mentioned? Femi Taylor is in that as a dancer. Um, it's yeah, it's a it's like a drug induced marijuana musical from 1980. It, it was um, a canon film, and it was just it was horrible, but uh, it, it's pretty good though overall. Okay, that's cool. I'll check it out. I was yeah. thinking about going through like a Neil Simon marathon oh. where we watch Neil Simon movies. Yes. Um, we did just watch Grumpy Old Man, <laughs> and they liked it. They liked it a lot, <laughs> which I didn't think they would, but they did. I mean, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon are just the cutest things ever. They're mm -hmm. just adorable. So it was hard not to like that movie. We just watched that recently. Yeah, I love those. Um, I do, too. I think the favorite thing I've shown them, their favorite movie I've shown them during quarantine has been The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, yeah. They just love that movie and have watched it a couple times since the first time we watched it. So I think that's kind of their sensibility, something that's a little deep and funny at the same time, has good moments in it. Mm -hmm. Those are those are good. They yeah, are good. I think I think those definitely would be the best ones. Um, but yeah, oh my God! So this year, I have just interviewed so many icons. I started out the year with Marion Ross from Happy Days. You did? Mm-hmm. That's so cool. I loved Happy Days when I was a kid. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And How is she doing? She's yeah. You know, she's been retired for a couple of years now, but um, she was just wonderful and delightful and. Yeah, you know, people have called me back uh, before and told me they had a great time, but she called me back two hours later and told me I was a gentleman and she had a great time. Oh, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. I just, that's really nice. That's nice to hear. It's nice to hear when people you like are nice people, you know, people you see in media. It's yeah. nice to hear when they're actually nice people, too. Oh, that's I had, great. I, oh, I had a bad experience last night. Um, I've been wanting to get Tony Basil on the show for a long time. Who sings, who sings? Oh no! And she was on last night. It was a bad experience. No, she wasn't on last night. Um, I called her to set it up and stuff, and she was just so rude and barking at me like a dog. And no way. Yeah, I was. I was very disappointed. And the person who who connected us is has is a, is a new friend of mine, and she's an absolute sweetheart. And she's a manager for a lot of big names. She's not actually her manager, but she is good friends with her. And I thought. 
it was going to be a much more pleasant experience and stuff, but it wasn't. So I was just thinking, no, no, I pass. I don't want to talk to her. Yeah, there's no need to spend time talking to anybody who's rude. There's just no need. That stinks. That's really disappointing. Yeah, Sorry. it happens sometimes. You know, I've had you know a handful of bad experiences interviewing people, including that director I just mentioned. And right, from, Star, from Star Trek. It's from Star Trek. But it's... Mm-hmm. It, it goes with the territory. I mean, I've had 99% good experiences. And I just interviewed Burt Ward, who played Robin earlier this yes. month. Yeah. He was great. Cool. He was great. He, he was great. Um, I could have gone on another 10 minutes with him, but I had another interview, and it was a rescheduling with him. So I, I cut it off about 10 minutes short, but he was great. That's great. And My kind of thing is really fun, isn't it? It is. It, it, it's it, really it's, it's phenomenal. You yeah. Know? And it I, is. I got Anita Pointer this week. You say that one more time? Anita Pointer of the Pointer Sisters. No way. <laughs> yep. Wow, you are getting some really big icons. That's amazing. Yeah. A lot, a lot of musicians, I'll tell you, because musicians are very difficult to get. They have more boundaries than actors do because... They're protected by management. They're seen a lot more. And this year, I've been very lucky with getting musicians. That's great. Boy, your hard work is really paying off. It is. You know, um, I did my 900th show a couple weeks ago. Um, I had Michelle Bauer, uh, who did all those late-night erotica sex comedy movies with horror in them back in the late 80s, early 90s. And... I, she's not on social media. I got her through somebody that I found out knew her, and she was just so wonderful and so dirty like me. We got along great. She <laughs> she wants uh, she wants to get together next time I'm in L.A. and um, it was it was it, it was it was great. It was just a, a dream, and you know I'm a I'm a guy who's not much of a morning person, but it, it was worth getting up early. And talking to her for roughly two hours. That was great. That's awesome. How exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy all this is happening for you. That's so exciting. I'm really proud of you. That's great. You Thanks. know, it's a testament to focus and hard work, and it all pays off. Focus and hard work. And you have been very focused and working really hard. It's so great. You should be really proud of yourself. I, I am, you know. I just need to get my health in check and, and lose all this weight, and then I'll be happier, you know, because... So how do you take what you already do well, focus, mm-hmm. right? right. And, and this hard work that you're doing for your podcast, how do you take that same work ethic and apply it to your health? Because if you can do it in one area, then you can figure out how to do it in another area. If there was no area of your life where you worked hard and had all this focus then I would say it would be really, really, really hard. But if you have it here, how do you shift your mindset with your health and your eating habits and your workout habits to to make it similar? I think maybe I need to cut back on the number of guests I have each day because I have two or three sometimes. Mm. I think that may be a, a key contributing factor. Um, this one guy I know who's, who's pioneered horror podcasting, um, out in, um, Boston, he found out at the end of 2018 that he needed to lose weight and he lost a hundred pounds in just six months, um, by changing his lifestyle and everything. And my goodness, hundred pounds is, is a lot. That's great. Yeah. And I think I need to like maybe follow his model or something like that as well, you know, You know, when I started working out with this trainer, Mm -hmm. I had a lot of feelings about it. I was like, I should be able to do this by myself. Why am I paying somebody to help me do something I can get access to online for free? I had so many judgments on, on my needing help in this area. But the truth is, I had tried consistently to lose weight and keep it off. For years, and I would go, I'd do great, and then I'd stop doing great, and I'd do great, and then I'd stop doing great. So at a certain point, I had to say to myself, maybe I can't do this by myself. Maybe I do actually need some help. 
So I have no problem getting help in therapy. I go to therapy for help. I, I have no problem if I have a broken tooth. I go to the dentist, no hesitation. But I always had a hesitation with getting some help. Mm -hmm. So once I started with the trainer, what I'm not I'm not suggesting you get a trainer, but just that I shifted my focus about uh, eating and working out being a priority. So I would do the same thing, Tommy. I would slam my day so full that I didn't have time to make a healthy lunch. I would slam my day so full that the lunch I would eat would be Jack in the Box because that's all I have time for, yeah. or Taco Bell. And that's, I, I built my life that way. So when I started working with a trainer, I thought to myself, I'm not going to spend all this money on this guy to help me get in shape and not do it all the way. So I'm going to stop scheduling something at noon mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. Sometimes I can't help it, but sometimes things happen and you have to schedule something around lunchtime. But I stopped scheduling anything that went into lunch so I had enough time to make a healthy lunch. And I think that one little bitty shift made – all the difference in the world. I don't think I realized how busy I had made my life and really backed myself into a corner where I was, my only option to eat was to eat something that was unhealthy. Uh, and just that simple shift of going, you know what, I'm going to give myself the space to make a healthy lunch and eat it really made a big difference. And that seems maybe silly, and it actually wasn't that hard to fix. <laughs> All I did was go, nope, I can podcast at 10. I cannot podcast at noon. Yes. I can podcast at 1. I, I, I mean, even 11 is a little dicey because I'm going through lunch. So if I can go from 10 to 12 or whatever in my own podcast, that's great. But between 12 and 1, I need to be open to eat something healthy. Uh, it's not that difficult, and it seems really – obvious <laughs> but it wasn't for me i had to really stop and think about it so i wonder if just something simple like that would be helpful and to really plan that because you know with covid something that's been helpful for me is that i instacart a lot so i don't have to go out in public so then i can't walk through the aisle and go oh i'll just put the oreos in the cart oh i'll just you know graham crackers look good I don't do that. I go on Instacart and I buy healthy food and that's all I buy. So it doesn't come in my house. Um, disclaimer, my husband goes to Rite Aid and buys every piece of junk food in the joint and then brings it home. So I do have junk food, <laughs> but not for me. I really try to stick to healthy stuff and just eat what I have and not go out and look for bad things because I could live all day long on fast food and candy bars I could live on that. That would make me so happy if someone said, here's your diet plan. McDonald's, Jack in the Box, I'd be like, right on. <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. I had, Car I had Carl's Jr. last night. <laughs> oh, I love Carl's Jr. I love fast food. Um, but I just had to say, mm -hmm. is it getting me what I want? No. Okay. Well, let's figure out something that will. If you're so successful with this podcast, I believe that you can figure out a way to apply the skills you use to be successful in your podcast, to be successful in taking care of your health. And it may take some trial and error, but you can do it. I, I, th I think so, too, yes. Um, I, that, that, that would be perfect if I could come up with a, a game plan like that. Yes, um, good. Oh my God, I got to tell you about these two interviews I did this year that really stayed with me for like 24 hours. Okay. Back in February, I interviewed uh, this actress who was in a uh, cult movie. Do you remember, um, they still call me Bruce? I do, but I don't think I ever saw it. Okay, there was They Call Me Bruce, and then there was the sequel, They Still Call Me Bruce. They Still Call Me Bruce was a, was a better movie, I thought, and I've always loved it. And uh, she played um, Bruce's love interest in it, and her name is Bethany Wright. And she's been she's been a showgirl in Vegas, being a Marilyn Monroe impersonator. She's um, done a lot of theater. She's been um, in a lot of uh, B movies and stuff and TV shows. She was on Walker Texas Ranger a bunch of times. That's cool. And 
she told me, oh my God, okay, so we talked for approximately two hours. And for 53 minutes of that interview, we talked about They Still Call Me Bruce. She really opened up to me, told me the dark stuff that happened during that movie, the happy stuff. And then she told me about the dark stuff that happened in her life after. And she just really opened up to me. And people have been opening up to me a lot lately. And I've been very gratified by that. But this one was just very special, I thought. And so that one stayed with me for 24 hours. And then um, back in May, I did a month-long block where I was having um, my, my, my movie star friends I've made on, um, porn stars, uh, sex doctors, everyone, and doing sex episodes because uh, May is International Masturbation Month. And few, few people know that. I did not know that. Yes. And I had this one woman on. Her name is Dr. Linda Mona. She has been in a wheelchair since she was six years old because she has autoimmune disease. And she is a sex doctor for disabled people. She helps um, disabled people have better sex lives. And when she told me that she had been in a wheelchair since she was six, I was not aware of that. I just, it, it, it tugged at my heartstrings. And that whole interview stayed with me for 24 hours because she was just so inspiring and she, she lived in, uh, in San Mateo um, for a long time because she went to Stanford, and we kind of bonded over that. And um, she, 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 she listened to a lot of my politically incorrect uh, stories. Uh, I, told her, <laughs> I, I told her, you know, about when I was 26, I actually had sex with a girl in a wheelchair. And she, she thought it was pretty funny, and she was laughing about that stuff, you know. And it was just, it was just a very poignant experience for me. That's great. That's really great. I know the podcasting uh, conversations can be so powerful. Um, I think we we forgot maybe in some ways how powerful conversations were until podcasts started coming around. You know, we kind of lost our way as a culture about just hanging out and having good, deep conversations, and to have, you know, hundreds or even thousands or hundreds of thousands of people listening to good conversations has got to be healing and growth, you know, kind of growth related, so Mm -hmm. it's a good thing you're doing. Yeah, if you go on YouTube, right, and you look at your favorite celebrities from back in the 80s doing interviews, right, if you see them on uh, Phil Donahue or Good Morning America, right? The, yeah. the, 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 the personal information they share um, is very rare. But if you watch them on like a local talk show um, in, in whatever town that they were in and, you know, that nobody knows and stuff, they, they, will, they, they shared personal information that you would hear on a podcast because they knew that the whole world wasn't going to be watching that particular interview. You know, right. I think that was where the seed was planted. Mm, in a way. That's interesting. That's a really interesting perspective. Yeah. Yeah. But you're probably right. You know, uh, there, there was this talk show up in Canada uh, that was on public access. It was called Conversation. And if you go on YouTube, there's different um, clips of um, interviews, but there's a full length interview with David Carradine on there. And. He gets very intimate and personal about his life and career in that interview. It, it, it's like it's like watching a podcast in 1989, pretty much. That's really cool. Yeah, you're like a you're like a, a historian. You you are someone who has a lot of knowledge about very specific things. I don't think a lot of people know the things that you know. So it's really cool. Very very cool. I, I do definitely consider myself a historian, you know, and I tell people this all the time, you know, and that girl that I did the podcast for, Kat, she's definitely a historian, you know, I, I see a, historians are very needed, very necessary, and few and far between. Yes, I see her writing a book in the future, and I definitely see myself writing a book in the future. I think that would be great. I think that would be really, really great. Yeah. So how's your, so how's your show been, been doing? I've, I've, I haven't watched it as much. 
um, lately because I'm not a big fan of virtual, you know, podcasts, you know. But yeah. I have been watching it, you know. And are you are you having a great time doing the virtual? Oh yeah, I, I it took some getting used to. It's not my favorite. I like being in the room. Yeah, me with too. With my friends, but you know, I guess the positive is the camera shots are really good. You can see everybody's faces really well. But um, you know, it's been hard. It's I feel like we're we're all talking about COVID. And that's kind of all we're talking about. So I'm starting to get a little frustrated with, with not with the podcast, but I want to talk about something else for a little bit. And I feel like I've gotten off the, you know, not that my podcast was about mental health, but it definitely talks about mental health a lot. And I haven't gotten to do that for a while. So, so um, I'm really I'm still very much enjoying uh, Wife of the Party and, and uh, I just wish I could have my friends in my, my studio with me. I really miss that part of it. Um, but we will get back there at some point. We will, we, will, we will make it through this and get back to some kind of normalcy. Um, I believe that. So, so yeah, it's, it's okay. It's going, I mean, I, I really enjoy it. So um, I just would like to have my friends back face to face. That's my one complaint. I want my friends back with me on the couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I enjoyed talking to Kirsten back in February. Yeah, she told me. She's so lovely. Isn't she such oh, a lovely person? She, uh, God broke God uh, broke the mold when they made Kirsten, I'll tell you. They most certainly did. She is just a lovely, lovely human being, and I'm so glad to know her and uh, call her a friend. She's just a great person. I'm glad you got to talk to her. I know Kathy is hard to nail down. I know you've been trying to get Kathy, too. Kathy is not on Facebook ever and yeah. not on Instagram and so unplugged. And finally, one day, she, Kirsten and I were talking about you and how Kirsten had done the podcast, and she was like, oh, oh, okay, I'll totally do that. And I thought, it'll be six months before she ever reaches out to Tommy. She's just, <laughs> you know, she's a baker. She's a quiet. Oops, there's a, I'm talking to you outside, and somebody just showed up with a blower. <laughs> um, she's just a slow mover. So yeah, she'll get to you at some point. But sounds like you've had lots of people and, and uh, lots of guests and lots of great interviews. That's wonderful. I'm so happy for you, Tommy. Thank you so much. Yeah, I've had more than than I than I deserve. I feel you know. And it's funny. Last time I was talking to Joy, uh, Joy told me you know you know she's gotten so many followers on her podcast that you know she feels like she's gotten more people than she deserves as well. You know, it's just. It's, it's very humbling for people, you know, who are nobody and then they make themselves into somebody, you know? Yes, it's very powerful. Very, very powerful and a testament to what you can achieve anywhere in your life, in your life if you decide to. Because if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere because you know how. So that's true of, of anybody doing anything. You know, if you're playing a sport and you play it really well, then you can apply that to other places. If you just figure out how, sometimes I think we think we're in one lane and, and our skills only apply to that one lane, but they, they actually don't. If you break down the skills you have for achieving in that lane, like if you're really good at softball and so you go, okay, I'm really good at softball because I have good focus and I'm really quick thinker and I um, am fast on my feet. How do you apply those skills to other places in your life that you feel you aren't achieving like you'd like to? I think that's kind of makes it very simple that life doesn't have to be as complicated as we maybe think it is. It can be quite simple. How, what is working and why is it working and how do I apply that other places helps you kind of, kind of shift, make a shift and, and make changes in your life without maybe hitting the bottom like your brother. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know, I worry too. One, one thing I worry about with COVID is the future of the conventions because, you know, I've been trying to get into the, to, um, the, the conventions to, to host panels and do all that stuff, you know, and I just hope that all, all conventions are not going to be virtual after this because I've seen them 
and I think that they are terrible because everyone gets like a two minute time li- limit with each celebrity. You know, you select uh, you know what autograph you want, and then they send it to you. I just think that's terrible. Yeah, that's not fun. But I really believe this is temporary. So for now, if that's the best we can do, okay. But I think it's temporary. Um, we're all trying to kind of adjust to this new moment in time, but I don't think this is permanent. I think our scientists in the world are so smart, we're going to come up with a way to keep this um, this terrible disease under control. It's just going to take a little time, so we just have to be patient. Just be patient and stay the course, and we'll get there at some point. And, you know, adjust what you're doing to still move forward in this new set of rules that we've come up with that hopefully are temporary. Hopefully. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. Did uh, Kirsten tell you about my secret silly game? No. Okay. So I I wanted to play it with you the last couple of times, but um, uh, you had to go uh, suddenly. But um, so... This secret silly game, I've been I've been playing it since 2018. Um, this came out of an improv I did with a friend of mine who's not in show business while we were doing a podcast. Um, this is a series of silly slumber party questions, and how this works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me the exact same question, and I answer it. Okay. Okay. Leanne, are you ticklish? Are you ticklish? Oh, I am baby ticklish. <laughs> I've been known to hit a few people in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> here's a here's the obligatory question: Is your belly button an any or an Audi? My belly button is an any. Is your belly button an any or an Audi? It's a very deep any. That's well, good. I, I think there aren't many Audis, are there? Oh, there are. I've met quite a number of them, especially uh, doing this podcast and show business. Mm, interesting. Yeah. It is it is rare, though, but there are a lot of them. Interesting. Uh, what color are your toenails painted? My toenails are painted blue. Nice. What color are your toenails painted? They are au naturel. <laughs> <laughs> Mitt out paint. <laughs> yes. Uh, what would you say is your best personality trait? Mm, my best personality trait, huh? I don't know. What What would be a personality trait? What do you mean by that? Like um, a characteristic. Mm, my best person curiosity. Curiosity. What would be your best personality trait? My sense of empathy and that I have no filter. That is a good one. Mm-hmm. And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Is there a stinky smell that makes me gag? Vomit. Vomit. I, thought, I really like the smell of vomit. Is there a stinky smell that makes you gag? That, that's a popular one. Um, yes, farts or feet. Farts or feet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You would not do well in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There are so many farts, and we have feet in this house. We call swamp feet. I've I, every time I tell that to someone with kids, it doesn't affect them. <laughs> you have no choice. I have been living with swamp foot for years now. We have one person in this house who has always had, from the time that person was a toddler, <laughs> sweaty, stinky feet. And there's nothing she can do about it. So our choice is to make her feel rejected every day of her life or just accept that we're living with swamp feet. <laughs> so you would not do great in my house. And obviously bird parts constantly, so. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, so that, that would be bad. <laughs> we'll have to, if you ever come over to our house, we'll have to have you uh, stay outside. <laughs> You're not trapped. I told so I told that to this this one woman um, who's a, who's an actress an acting teacher and she said to me that should be the name of your memoir farts and feet <laughs> and I said that's awesome 
awesome. Yeah, I kind of agree. That's great. <laughs> I don't think I would call it that, but I would definitely use it as a review blurb on the back of the book. You have to use it somewhere because it's pretty brilliant. <laughs> Parts and feet. <date. laughs> yeah, well, it's the it's the legendary Kate McGregor Stewart who. Um, taught uh, Marissa Tomei, and Marissa Tomei um, mentioned her in her Academy Award acceptance speech, so I'm definitely going to put that in the back of a book. There you go. That's a, she, she sounds like she might know what she's talking about. Yeah, if, and if, if people will read it, they'll go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have to say, listen to episode blah, 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 and you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How many, what episode number are you on now? Uh, today, you're 919. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Yes. What a body of work to be proud of. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm like, uh, I'm a savant. <laughs> you are pretty amazing, and you should give yourself credit for that. Uh, Hard work. Thank you. Dedication and focus. It's uh, a big deal. Thank you Big so deal. Much. Follow through. All of that is, all of those qualities are so important. So, yeah, you. you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm very proud of what I'm doing and stuff. And like you, I, I there's that one guest that I want to get that I that I can't, but I'm going to fight hard to do it. It's not Tony Basil anymore because she <laughs> she just turned me off last night. I know that you've been trying to get Miss Pat on yours. Yes, we have been trying, and, and we just can't make our schedules work. I actually kind of stopped trying for a little bit, and now I think it may start again now that we're in COVID and she's uh, she's had a lot of downtime. Maybe she'll have more time. So I would love to talk to Miss Pat. I think so would Kirsten, and so would Kathy. We would love to pick her brain about her memoir, um, which was just so amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. Who's your guest? I would love uh, Ileana Douglas. Wonderful actress, isn't she? She is, and you know she is a uh, a huge Hollywood historian because you know her grandfather was Melvin Douglas. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would imagine she would be. She seems like a very real person. Yeah. Um. She's got you know um, she's got this podcast. It was it was named after her memoir. I blame Dennis Hopper, but then she changed it to the film scene, and. Um, her her former sidekick on there is 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 a Facebook friend of mine, and she follows me on on everything I do and stuff. And she's really funny, and she's got a great sense of humor. And I'm yeah, I'm hoping to get her in the future so we can talk about classic Hollywood films and stuff. And she just seems like she'd be a lot of fun. Well, that's great. That's I think that's a great person to uh, aspire to have as a guest. Good luck. I hope you get her. Oh, thank you. Yes. I also would like to get uh, uh, Nina Hartley. I don't know who that is. Who's that? Porn star. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't watch porn, so I don't know who that is. <laughs> Why would you like to get Nina Hartley? Um, she's got, got a great mind, and she's very intelligent, and uh, we could have a great conversation, a no-filter conversation about things, you know. And uh, she, she ain't going to remember me, but um, what, back in 2004, she gave me uh, a hand job. I met her at a um, meet and greet at a sex shop. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, then there's that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, maybe you can get her to come on as a guest, too. I've been trying. I've been trying. She's been busy and stuff, yeah. but we'll see. But, yeah, there's just, there's, it's just going gonna, gonna to keep going. You know, I'm going to have... So many great ones, and I'm looking forward to October because every October I have an entire month of nonstop horror movie guests. And I started that in 18, and 18 was a pretty good year for that. 19 was was great, could have been a little bit better, but this year is going to be the ultimate year, I think. That's awesome. That's, good. That's a great idea to do it all the month of October. Really smart. Yeah, because I, I follow a bunch of other horror podcasts. They don't... They they kind of go on hiatus a little bit in October, and it's like you can't do that. You gotta pay, you gotta play to your demographic, you know, because you're horror and it's October, so why not, you know? Yeah, totally makes perfect sense. I'm surprised they go on hiatus. That, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, actually. <laughs> yeah, and they do maybe 
they do maybe one or two during that month, but they're just mostly lazy. But yeah, I I just I just like to do like a full shebang that whole month. You know, I had so many people on last year from landmark horror movies, every everything from Killer Clowns to um, uh, some Friday the Thirteenth people and many other things. That's really cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. So, I'm a lucky boy. <laughs> yes, you are. You are lucky. And I hope and pray that your mom gets better fast and that your brother stays on a good path and that you continue with your success um, and get your, get your um, pie-in-the-sky guests your two ladies you're looking at. Mm-hmm. That would be great. That would make 2020 a good year if it, all that happened. That would be awesome. Yeah. My, my biggest fear, though, is like, a, I mean, I plan on, you know, I still plan on moving to L.A. at a certain point, but I don't want to move out of here anytime soon during this whole crisis with my mom and everything. You know, I hope no. we, we won't have to. I hope not. And somebody just bought our building um, a couple of months ago, and I just, I hope we won't have to, like, leave anytime soon and stuff, because it, it took us a long time to find a place after we were living in poverty for four years, you know? Yeah. Well, let's hope. And, you know, you will move to L.A. when the time is right. Yes. The opportunity and the time will present itself, and you'll go, now is the time. And that's, that's kind of the way it works, I think. I really believe things happen for a reason, and you just yeah. maybe know know the reason or understand it completely. But if you trust it, then it'll all turn out okay. If if we can get COVID under control in October, um, I should be down there because um, this one guest of mine, Denise Gossett, she has a um, horror festival called Shriek Fest, and this is supposed to be the twentieth year of it if everything goes right. And she's keeping me in the loop um, of whether or not it's going to happen because I'm going to be um, pressed there. And if I can get d- down there in October, oh my God, it'll be it'll be great because I need to get out of the house. <laughs> Don't we all? We all need to get out of the house. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yes. Well, Leanne, I thank you so much for coming back on again, and I always have a great time talking with you. Same here. Thank you for having me again. It's always nice to hear your voice and to talk to you for a bit. You have such a great mind, and uh, especially about movies, and I think that it's just a fun conversation. I, I look forward to it every time, so thank you so much for having for having me. Always, always, yes. And um, I'll let you know how everything goes, and we'll talk again. That sounds great. Have a good day. You too. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Leanne Kreischer. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, God, I love Leanne. She's the greatest, isn't she? Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past.